Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes presents The Big Story. I was up on the road near the dam when it happened. All of a sudden, there was an explosion, and then I saw this car down here burning. Uh, take it slow, mister, will you? I'm trying to write this down in my report. I, I ran right down here, but the heat drove me back. Then I called you state police quick as I could. Uh, near as I can make out, someone must have gotten out of the car and staggered over here to the river. But what happened to him? What do you think? Oh, the body. It went over the dam. If he was lucky, he was dead when it happened. All that water, thousands of tons of it. Pouring down like a rain of steel. We'll never find his body now. Never. The big story. Here is America. Its sound and its fury, its joy and its sorrow, as faithfully reported by the men and women of the great American newspapers. Cleveland, Ohio. From the pages of the Cleveland News, the authentic story of a reporter who found that death can make a piece of fiction come to life. Tonight, to Ike McAnally of the Cleveland News, goes the Pell Mell Award for the big story. That's important. Pell Mell's greater length filters the smoke on the way to your throat. Filters the smoke and makes it mild. Yes, Pell Mell's greater length of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos means a longer natural filter to screen and cool the smoke. Thus, Pell Mell gives you a smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette offers you. Pell Mell famous cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. Pell Mell's greater length filters the smoke on the way to your throat. That's important. Pell Mell's greater length filters the smoke on the way to your throat. Filters the smoke and makes it mild. If you really want to enjoy smoking, ask for the longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package. Pell Mell. <laughs> as it actually happened. Ike McAnally's story, as he lived it. Cleveland, Ohio. Every city seems different, except when you get down real close to it. Then, you know that they're all alike. A city lives because of its people. And in the stories that you, Ike McAnally, write for the Cleveland News, you tell what happens to them. Sob stuff, laughs, and heartbreak. The obituaries and the birth notices, side by side. And on this cold December day, as you head for an interview with the wife of Dr. David Wagner, the whole picture of the city suddenly narrows down to one small frame. For in the window of the Wagner house is a wreath of Christmas. And below the nameplate on the door is a wreath of black. What more can I tell you, Mr. McAnally? Well, your husband's accident, Mrs. Wagner. They identified his car by the license plates. But the way it exploded, the police can't figure it out. Dr. Wagner was a chemist. I know. He was on his way to Philadelphia to demonstrate a new process for purifying water. There were chemicals in his car. In some way, they, they must have caught fire. Uh, a bump in the road, broken bottle in his luggage, any one of a dozen things could have done it. He was good. He was kind. I love him so much. It's as if he's still with me. I'm very sorry. He was always promising the children that we'd all go away on a long vacation. 
We had so little time to spend with you. I, I should mind my own business, but why don't you go away with the children? There's the insurance. No, there isn't. You mean the doctor didn't carry a policy? He carried one, all right, for $50,000. But you just said... It's this way, Mr. McAnally. The insurance company claims it has no proof of death. Our broker, Mr. Murray, has been arguing with them, but it's no use. I don't get it. They, they found the car. But they didn't find my husband. Oh, then under company rules, you have to wait seven years before being paid. My husband's just missing, they say. It's a rotten deal. A man works to make sure that his wife and kids will be taken care of. It's not, it's not right to let it all go for nothing. Excuse me? Of course. Company rules. Forget about people. Remember the rules. Hello? Is Ike McAnally there, please? This is his office. Just a moment, please. It's for you. Thank you. Guy spends half his life just... Hello? Oh, what's the matter with you? Huh? Oh, oh, oh Carol. Grab an aspirin, Ike. Just pick something off the AP wire. Seems a guy went into a Philadelphia bank and cashed five grand worth of traveler's checks. So? Tell that dame you're interviewing that she may not be a widow after all. The guy who cashed the checks identified himself as Dr. David Wagner. Look, Murray, if anyone knows Wagner's business, it's you. You handled his insurance and his traveler's checks. Well? Didn't Wagner sign these checks? I'll admit it looks like his signature, McAnally, but I don't see how it could be. Why not? The clerk who gave him the money identified him perfectly. He could be wrong. Five people can look at one man and each will give a different description of it. But they all couldn't forget a signature like this. No. The prisons are full of men who could write your signature blindfolded. You know Wagner signed these checks, Murray. Why don't you admit it? Uh, look, McAnally, you're not just asking me to verify a signature. You want me to say that David Wagner's alive. Doesn't this prove it? McAnally, will you listen to me for a minute? I want to see David Wagner alive as much as anyone else, but to go on such flimsy evidence as a check that could have been forged to raise a woman's hopes that her husband is alive... Be reasonable, Murray. I don't know what Wagner's up to. But it's a cinch he's on a disappearing act of some kind. Well, I don't see it. I don't see it at all. What reason could he have for making believe he was dead? I don't know. That's what I have to find out. <laughs> Where do you begin? Where do you find the reason for a respected, successful man suddenly vanishing without a trace? Somewhere in this man's life, there must be an answer, perhaps obscure and hidden, but you know it has to be there. You ask the woman who's closest to him. If anyone holds the key, it must be his wife. No. No, there's nothing. You're all wrong, Mr. McAnally. It isn't so. But, Mrs. White... If he were alive, he'd be with me. He'd come back to his home and his children. But he is alive. And he hasn't come back. Then he's sick. Of course, it has to be that. David would never stay away. He's sick. He has to be. Sometimes, Mrs. Wagner, things get so real that you can't believe them. They, they swell up, get big right in front of your eyes but you don't see them because you don't want to. No, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. Try to understand. I say your husband's alive. Why he hasn't come home, I don't know. But you've got to help me find it. The wind from the lake whips sharply against the window, and the cold comes into the room. You want to run outside and get away, but you can't. You have to sit there and watch as part of a woman's life slips away. I've tried to think of a reason, but there doesn't seem to be any. Except... Yes? Except for something I might have done. I don't think so. Uh, t tell me, Mrs. Wagner, was your husband in debt, perhaps trouble of some kind? Oh, I don't think he could find time for trouble. How do you mean? He seemed to be busy every minute. There was his work, his athletic club, his painting, so many things. Yes, this portrait on the wall, I've been looking at it. That's one of David's. Isn't it good? Very. 
The Willard Art Museum once held an exhibition of just his work. And the way he caught the face of this girl, almost lifelike. It seems to me I might know her. Uh, do you know her name, Mrs. Wagner? No, I don't know. She posed for my husband a few times, though. I see. Uh, I'm sorry to cause you so much trouble, Mr. McAnally. I guess it's the other way around. This has become just a little more than a story to me. I'm in this all the way. Till it's finished. <laughs> Ike McAnally. I'm with the Cleveland News. Oh? You're taking a poll or something? Sure. Uh, can I come in? Okay. Well? Miss Jenny Logan? You pressed the right button. I I'm doing a little research on a guy named David Wagner. The art agency gave me your name. What kind of research? I just modeled for him a few times, if, if that'll help. Well, you heard about his accident, I guess. Yeah, it was real rough. Poor guy. Rough on his wife, too, and the kids. Well, what can you do? That's the way things go. Uh, not always. This may come as a shock, Jenny. But David Wagner is still alive. You're crazy. The paper I read he was drowned. But they never found the body. They couldn't. All that water going over the dam. Uh, you know all the details, don't you? Well, I worked for the guy. I couldn't help being interested in what happened. Uh, better get that coffee over there, Jenny. It'll boil oh. over on the floor in a second. <laughs> You're coming to me like this. What could I know about Dr. Wagner? Well, you know how it is. I just have to check up on everyone. Uh, by the way, you seem to be kind of hipped on mysteries yourself. What do you mean? Oh, quite a book you've got here. The Living Corpse. Don't you open that book. Why don't you mind your own business? I didn't ask you to come up here and go snooping around. Now get out of here before I call the super, you hear me? Get out. Get out! <laughs> Could you help me, please? Please, lose your We try to keep the library as quiet as possible. Sorry. Now, what is it you wanted? A book. Naturally. But which one? Well, it's just a cheap little detective thriller. I see. Its name, please? The Living Corpse. The Living Corpse? It's for a friend. But that's a great classic, sir, written by Leo Tolstoy. It is? Of course, it's a wonderful story. Don't you know it? Oh, I'm afraid not. Well, it's all about a respectable, well-established man who fakes his own death so that he can escape from a wife he no longer cares for. Then, by taking on a new name, he goes away with his sweetheart to begin a new life. It's a beautiful story. But, sir, don't you want the book? Couldn't he have slammed the door quietly? Cash, Matt? Uh, One-way ticket to New York, please. And hurry. Going someplace, Jenny. We'll be back in just a moment with tonight's big story. it mild. Your eyes can see Palmel's greater length. Yes, your eyes can see the difference. Your throat can tell you what it means. Palmel's greater length of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos means a longer, natural filter to screen and cool the smoke. Thus, Palmel gives you a smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette offers you. Yes, Palmel's are good. Good to look at. Good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. Palmel Famous Cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. Palmel's greater length. Filters the smoke on the way to your throat. That's important. Palmel's greater length. Filters the smoke on the way to your throat. Filters the smoke and makes it mild. If you really want to enjoy smoking, Ask for the longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package. Pell Mell. 
This is Cy Harris, returning you to your narrator and the big story of Ike McAnally as he lived it and wrote it. You, Ike McAnally of the Cleveland News, now find yourself in the middle of the strangest story you've ever covered. A story that only began when it seemed to have ended. You know that Dr. David Wagner had made it appear that he'd been killed. And for a while, their idea doesn't make sense. Wagner was living a secure, respected life, married and with two kids. Why should he want to disappear? But then you hit upon an answer, a famous book with a plot that gives you the reason. Going someplace, Jenny? <laughs> Mr. McAnally. You were in awful hurry, Jenny. The boys at the cab stand remembered you. Well, you could have brought me a box of candy. After all, I'm going on my vacation. Let's go in the waiting room. It's not so noisy. Uh, okay. I can give you a minute. This way. Well, what's on your mind? That book, Jenny. The Living Corpse by Tolstoy. David Wagner gave it to you. No. He gave it to you. And now you're leaving to meet him. You're crazy. I hadn't seen him in months. You're lying. Wagner's in love with Why you. Why don't you let me alone? How can I? This isn't just between you and Wagner. He's got a wife and kids, remember? What can I do about it? You can let him alone. You can tell him to come back where he belongs. You don't know what you're asking. There are some things you can't stop. Jump in front of a train and see if you'll even slow it down. This is the same way. David, me, you, and his wife. None of us can do anything about it. And you are in love with him? Sure. You know it. This isn't a thing I want to lie about. It's something too good for that. Listen, kid, you're wrong. Taking a man away from his home, leaving a wife and children without a dime, you can't call that good. David left her his insurance, 50,000 of it. But the company won't pay off. We've got a right to our lives, to do what we want. If you don't hurt anyone by doing it. You can't stop us. We're not breaking any law. I admit that. But I can spread your pictures over every front page in the country. They'll be known everywhere. You'll never get a minute's rest. All you... right, all right. What do you want me to do? Promise me that whatever, wherever you and Wagner go, you'll let us know where you are, the names you're using. We will. We will. I want your promise that Wagner will always provide for his family. I can't stop you from going to him. But I can make you give me your word on that. David will take care of his family. I promise. Sorry to bust in on you like this, Mrs. Wagner, but it's important. You sounded so excited on the phone, Mr. Well, Murray. I should have. Now, here. Look at this. What is it? A money order. Paying the premium due on your husband's insurance. Well, I don't understand. Well, who's this Charles Arnold who signed the money order? I haven't the faintest idea. There's something funny about this. Wait a second. What's the matter? The typing on the money order. You recognize it? The letter Y. See it? Huh? The place where the line breaks off and the V. How the side of it thins out. Oh, I see it. This was typed on my husband's machine. I know it. The portable he took away with him. Well, then this clue makes the signature on the traveler's check mean something now. I'm convinced that McAnally's right. Your husband is alive, and with this, we're going to find him. Apologies, Ike. Here's some evidence to prove you were right. Thanks, Mary. You're sure this type checks with your husband's machine, Mrs. Wagner? Of course it does. I'm certain, Mr. McAnally. Well, what do you make of it? I think David Wagner's still alive. Well, naturally he is, but where? I hate to disappoint you, Murray, but I don't know. Look, the money order was sent from New York. Track him from there. Well, there wouldn't be any use in that. 
What's the matter with you? Don't you want to find him? I don't think so. McAnally, you're out of your mind. It's all right, Mr. Murray. I'm sure Mr. McAnally knows what he's doing. Mrs. Wagner, I, I think you've known all along that I was right, that your husband was alive. Yes. I've known. I found out why he went away, and I want you to know that, too. Have you been holding out on us? You're just a bystander, Murray. Now keep quiet. All right, go ahead. I wouldn't tell you, Mrs. Wagner, if I didn't think you'd understand and accept it. I'll try to. Where is David, Mr. McAnell? Uh, the place, I don't know. It's unimportant now. The real thing is why he went away. I think he was crazy for doing it. You haven't told me why. Your husband went away, Mrs. Wagner, because he fell in love with another woman. Did you have to tell her that? She wants to live with the truth. It would be easier not to. You, you wanted me to tell you, didn't you? Yes. I guess I did. All right, who's the girl? Who is she? Jenny Logan, the one who modeled for that painting there on the wall. Where is she? With him. Who told you all this, Mr. McAnally? The girl? Or rather, she confirmed what I guessed. And you let her go to him. No one could have stopped her. If she loved David, she would have gotten to him some way. Yes, but she was the only trace to your husband. McAnally, you deliberately let her go. You threw away our only chance of finding him. Murray, listen. No, you listen. You've been going around crying how sorry you were for Mrs. Wagner and how rotten the company was not to pay off the insurance. I'm trying to help. Oh, sure you are. That's why you turned this girl loose to break up a family. McAnally, you're a fake. You just want a story. You don't give a... Second thought to this family. Stop it, stop it. What's the sense of any of this? Even if David did come back, he'd always be lost to me now. It's three miles back to the office, and you walk every step of it. You think of Jenny Logan and the promise she'd made. There should have been some word by now. She'd had plenty of time. But like David Wagner, she too had disappeared. And as the weeks and months go by, it's hard to forget that it was you who'd let her go. McAnally. This is Murray. I've got some news for you. What's up? I just thought you'd like to know that David Wagner's insurance policy expires tonight at 12 o'clock. The quarterly premium hasn't been paid. Nothing's come in since the last money I showed you. Now you tell me. Why didn't you let me know sooner I could have raised the money? Mrs. Wagner told me not to. It's her problem, she said. And just between us, McAnally, I don't think she cares anymore. Who can blame her? But that policy is her one protection. You can't cancel it. No, but the company can. Sorry. Maybe now you know what a mess you've made of things. Why the champagne, David? We're celebrating, Jenny. Our last day in Vienna. And now? Now where do we run to? Another city. Budapest, perhaps. What name shall we use there? Cheer up, Jenny. If you like, we'll keep the ones we have now. Here's a toast. To Anna and Joseph. I don't mean to complain, David. It's been wonderful, all of it. I've seen all the places I used to read about. And the clothes, they're just as beautiful as you said they were. I saw you packing them this morning. Why? I'm sending them to my kid sister. She'll be crazy about them. Dear little Jenny, still thinking about home. And you? Have you forgotten? No. I remember. It's like that book you gave me, David. The people in it tried to forget. They tried to build a wall between themselves and the past. But they couldn't. Everything ends, Jenny. I know, David. 
And this, too. But our lives back home have also ended. I... I keep thinking about what that reporter said to me. We've got a right to our own lives, to do what we want, as long as we don't hurt anybody by doing it. You'll keep your promise to him. I'm taking care of everything. I was never worried. And us, Jenny. What shall I do about us? You decide, David. I'm not afraid. Then we'll always be together. Always. Look out of the window, Jenny. It's a beautiful world, isn't it? And but for you, I'd never have seen it. I've loved you very much. David. Together. Always. The news comes back. And you've got the story of a girl who believed in paying off on a bargain. But the words you write come slow and hard. So this is a story that touches the lives of everyone around it. On a warm spring day in Vienna, it ended for Jenny Logan and David Wagner. But for you and the others, it'll always live in memory. Read to a telegram from Mike McAnally of the Cleveland News with the final outcome of tonight's big story. Tell Mel's greater length filters the smoke on the way to your throat. That's important. Tell Mel's greater length filters the smoke on the way to your throat. Filters the smoke. And makes it mild. Pell Mell's greater length of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos filters the smoke on the way to your throat. Thus, Pell Mell gives you a smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette offers you. Yes, Pell Mell's are good. Good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. So if you really want to enjoy smoking, Ask for the longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package. Pell-Mell Famous Cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. Now we read you that telegram from Mike McAnally of the Cleveland News. Subsequent investigation in tonight's big story revealed fact that David Wagner left evidence in his room in Vienna as to his and Jenny's real identity. The double suicide took place an hour before midnight on the day the insurance policy was to expire so that Mrs. Wagner could collect the $50,000. My sincere appreciation for tonight's Pell Mell Award. Thank you, Mr. McAnally. The makers of Pell Mell famous cigarettes are proud to have named you the winner of the Pell Mell $500 Award for notable service in the field of journalism. Listen again next week, same time, same station, when Pell Mell famous cigarettes will present another big story. A big story from the front pages of the Seattle Times. Byline, Don Magnuson. A big story about a reporter who made a winner out of a three-time loser. The Big Story is produced by Bernard J. Proctor with music by Vladimir Zelinsky. Tonight's program was written by Alvin Boris. Your narrator was Bob Sloan and Sidney Smith played the part of Ike McAnally. In order to protect the names of people actually involved in tonight's authentic big story, the names of all characters in the dramatization were changed with the exception of the reporter, Mr. McAnally.
Saturday, March 12th, marks the 37th birthday of the Girl Scouts in the United States. This is Girl Scout Week. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>